Hey, I'm back with part two of my peek and pop animation series. Last time I did the animation that happens when you start to do a peek gesture. One of the cell rows starts to expand out. And this animation that I'm doing today is the continuation of that where you continue to press and you actually see the, the peak, which is like a preview card of the content that you're pushing on. And I'll continue to do some more videos on this because that's only the first half of the peak pop uh, animation. There's a lot to that animation, so I'm breaking it up. And this is sort of a intermediate transition designer tutorial. It's a fun one to follow along with because it has some kind of detailed transition designer techniques in it. And this was a viewer suggestion. So if you have a suggestion of a tutorial that you would like me to do, please leave it in the comments. Okay, last time I did just this pre-peak as I've been calling it. And this time I'm adding a third screen that's going to be the actual peak. So you start out on this screen, you push down, you get to this state, and you keep pushing down, you'd get to this state that has the preview of the content, that's the peak part. So here I am back in Flinto with that third screen imported in from Sketch. And here's how my prototype works currently. There's a touch down gesture that takes me here and a touch up gesture that takes me back. And that simulates that first portion of the peak animation. Now because there's no true 3D touch gesture in Flinto, I have to kind of fake this. What I'm gonna do is make it so that if I touch down here and then move my mouse out, the touch up doesn't happen. And then I'll put another touch down here that takes me to the third screen. And that way I can test out all the, set, all the different parts of this animation. Okay, so from B, I wanna add an additional link. So I'll hold shift and click create link, target the next screen, and this will be a touch down, and I'll make a new transition for it. Okay, I'm gonna align the screens. And at the start of this transition, I want this card to be scaled down and positioned right where the row that it comes from is. And then I'll fade it out. In the actual thing, this is blurred, but I'm just gonna have it fade out, and I think it's fast enough that you can't quite tell the difference, but if you wanted to get this perfect, you could crossfade a blurred version, potentially. So there's that portion of it, that looks good. And what else needs to happen here? The background shrinks in even a little bit more. So I'm gonna start it up like this, fade it out, and then you see that it kind of shrinks down. Now the background from the other screen should shrink down with it, and it will fade out too. So I'm crossfading those backgrounds. And then the last thing that needs to happen is the row, that's this one here, should disappear. And I want to be able to see that row, the shade is currently covering it. So let me drag that up to the top of the layer list. And maybe now this card kind of fades in behind it and I'd like it to be on top. This, this layer here is that card. So I'm gonna drag it up to the top of the layer list as well so I can put it on top of that row. Now the card is on top, which it should be, and this uh, row fades out back into the background as the background shrinks. So that's, that's the basic animation there. And let's call this peak, exit out of the transition designer. And I should just put a link from here going back to the home screen, and that will be on touch up. And I'll make a new transition for that. This one will be really simple. I want to put this screen on the bottom and I'll drag it right underneath. And all that needs to happen is for, is for this card to shrink down and fade out. And the blurred background is going to expand back up while it fades out. And I should just match the background on the end screen by shrinking it down a little bit, having it fade out. So again, the background's crossfade. You can see that and the card disappears. Okay, so this will be return to home. I'll exit out of here. And now I'll open up the preview and we can test it out. So from this screen, touching down takes me here and letting go takes me back to the home screen. Now there's something wrong with that animation. So from here, this animation, I just noticed a problem. I'm gonna hold shift so I can watch it in slow motion. The screen gets a little bit dark for a moment there. So I'm gonna open up this transition and see what's wrong. I think I know it's that there's these two shade layers and they're probably interacting with each other a little bit and that's causing the extra darkness. You can see that. So I'm just gonna hide the shade layer in the start screen entirely. That means it's gonna be hidden through the entire transition. Now I'll go back into the preview and let's try this again. Cool, I didn't see that extra darkness this time. And now if I let go, takes me back all the way to the home screen. So touch down, 
I'm moving my mouse out just as kind of a hack so I can test this. Now I'll touch down again. You can imagine this is putting additional pressure and there's that. And if I just tap here, I can simulate just that portion of it. So this isn't a complete peak pop yet. I'm just doing it in sections. The first video was this part. And in this video, I've done this part. Now I need one additional part or maybe two, one where I continue to press from here and then a third where it pops into the final view. Now, because there's no 3D touch gesture in Flinto, this is maybe not the most useful thing to build, but it's a really good exercise just to see if it can be put together. And as I go, as I finish this, I might do one or two more videos on it. I'll see if I can uh, tweak some things using behaviors and timer links and maybe um, a long press gesture to get a more realistic overall sensation of the peak and pop gesture.